Hey there everyone, and welcome to Bill's Retro Gaming Show. Today, I'm going to be doing a review of the latest release from New Wave Toys. Don't be a chicken, because you're going to have to learn to fight like a robot if you want to survive this one. So that's right. Today, we're taking a look at New Wave Toys' latest replicate release, Berserk. <laughs> the arcade game Berserk was designed by Alan McNeil and published by Stern Electronics in 1980. Your player must make his way through robot-filled mazes armed with a laser gun. You need to take out as many robots as you can while making your way out of each room's maze. If the player takes too long, a smiling bouncing ball called Evil Otto appears and chases after you. The player can be killed in multiple ways, from robots who fire back to touching the electrified walls or being pounced upon by the indestructible Evil Otto. Berserk is one of the first arcade games to use a voice synthesizer chip, allowing for speech within the game. And of course, if you've ever walked past one of these in the arcade, you may have heard it say, coin detected in pocket, to entice you into playing. Two years later, in 1982, Alan McNeil and Stern would come out with a sequel to the game called Frenzy. Frenzy plays very similar to Berserk, but features updates such as destructible walls and the ability to kill Evil Otto. Both games are playable on the New Wave Toys Replicade, and you actually have a choice of which machine you want to purchase from them, with the Frenzy version coming in a special Survivor Series edition, making it look like a well-worn and used arcade cabinet. I opted to pick up the Berserk version, so that's the one we'll be looking at today. As typical with New Wave Toys, everything is well packaged, starting with their Pack and Crate box that opens up to reveal the box housing the game and all its accessories. The box artwork is always fantastic, and I've taken to holding onto them as display pieces in my arcade. Opening up the box, we'll start with a little baggie that holds most of the accessories for this machine. First, we have the manual, which will tell you all you need to know to operate the game. Next up, there are several little extras that come with this machine. They include a fake power cable, a coin door lock mechanism, a kick plate that you can stick to the bottom of the machine if you like, and several mini coins. There's also another little bag that includes an extra bat top for the joystick and several Atari stickers, but we'll talk more about those later. And of course, they also give you a USB-C charging cable. Finally, we have the game itself, kept safe with plenty of packing foam and wrapped in plastic. Once you get it out of the box, all that's left is to pull the protective film off the screen, charge it up, and you're good to go. Every New Wave Toys recreation strives to mimic the original arcade machine as closely as possible, and this one is no exception. The marquee here looks good, although possibly a little bit brighter than some of their other releases. This is especially noticeable in the black background at the top half of the marquee, which looks slightly washed out. It's not awful, but it is noticeable. The screen uses their new CRT FX 2.0 technology and it looks great. It gives the effect of looking at a tiny CRT screen, even though it's an LCD monitor and helps to sell the illusion of this being an actual mini arcade machine. The bezel surrounding the monitor is also a well-done replica of the original. This time around, New Wave Toys have opted to craft a metal control panel for this machine. I'm not sure how much difference this makes, other than to say it looks really good and is an almost exact replica of the original. I say almost because there is one key ingredient missing here. It's the same thing that's also missing from the marquee and the coin door as well. I'll let you guess what that is for now and come back to it later. They've also included an oversized black bat top replacement for the joystick. This is to mimic a joystick option for the original arcade machine. However, New Wave Toys cautions users that they should only use the black bat top for display purposes and not for actually playing the game. Now, I believe the concern is that it might put too much strain on the tiny metal shaft of the joystick and possibly break it. Speaking of the coin door, this one has some of the same features as New Wave Toys' last few releases. 
the coin mechanisms here are lit up, although that's only to light up the red quarter letters on each, just like the original arcade machine. In order to play a game, you have two options when it comes to mimicking the insert coin feature of an arcade machine. First, you have a tiny silver button on the left side of the coin door. Pressing this acts just like inserting a coin. Or you could go the traditional route and place one of the mini coins included in the left side coin slot. Now one other note here, the manual mentions that the coin door does not open, but this is not the case. By grabbing the faux key on the right side of the coin door, you can swing it open to get access to the coin box and retrieve your coins. It's a little tight, but I found that by getting my fingernail under the key, I can get it open fairly easily. It seems like every time New Wave Toys releases a new machine, they strive to add something new to the mix, and the same is true here. With this one, they've included a draw that you can open to get access to a replica of the original arcade machine's PCB. Pressing on the door will swing it open and activate an interior light. From here, you can slide out the PCB. And while this doesn't add anything to the playability of the machine, it's a cool little add-on that just ups the ante when it comes to a full-on replica of a real arcade machine. Finishing things up, you have similar features to most of New Wave Toy's other releases. And this would include a power button, LED power indicator, and a volume control dial along the top of the machine. In the back, you have a USB-C port for charging, an HDMI port for hooking this up to an external monitor, as well as two standard USB ports for plugging in external control pads. You'll also notice a mini plug that says power. Now, this is not for powering the machine, but for plugging in the included fake AC power cable. You'll also find the speaker itself on the back of the machine, which sounds just as good as all of their other releases. New Wave Toys have also done a great job replicating the side art of the original arcade game. The art here seems to be printed directly on the sides themselves. These are no stickers. And I have to say, I prefer this look to when the art is just a sticker slapped onto the side. Overall, they've done a really good job at making this machine look like the original, for the most part. But before I get into that, let's talk about a couple of other add-ons included with this release. First off, they've included a metal security bar and lock that connects to the front of the machine magnetically. This is to mimic the look of the security bars used on real arcade machines to help keep people from breaking into the coin mechanism. Also included is a metal kick plate that can be fastened to the bottom of the machine. Now it uses double-sided tape, so once you place it on there, you're most likely not getting it off without potentially damaging the wood front. So keep that in mind. And then there are the stickers. Remember how I kept mentioning that this was an almost exact replica of the original? Well, that's because the one thing missing here is the logo for the original distribution company, Stern. The Stern logo should be visible on the marquee here, on the control panel here, and on the coin door here. Instead, these areas are left blank and New Wave Toys have included stickers with the logo for Atari. Yep, Atari. The reason for this is that in March of 2023, Atari bought the rights to several of Stern's old arcade games, including Berserk and Frenzy. As a matter of fact, you'll notice it says Atari when the machine starts up and in the high score screens when playing the game. Interestingly enough, in the original renders for this release, the Atari logo was very prevalent on the machine itself. However, New Wave Toys listened to fan feedback and removed the logos from the machine. So while they couldn't actually include the Stern logo due to licensing, they chose to remove the logos and include the stickers instead. This way, people have the option of filling in those blank spaces with the included stickers or leaving them as is. 
And of course, my guess is someone enterprising out there will create their own set of Stern stickers you can use instead of the Atari ones and either offer them up on Etsy or as a free download for you to print your own. In either case, I'd call this a good compromise on New Wave Toys' part. There are two variations of this arcade replica that you can get from New Wave Toys themed after Berserk and Frenzy. Regardless of which one you purchase, both machines give you the ability to play both games. Now, to do this, you need to press the Player 1 and Player 2 buttons simultaneously to get access to the settings menu. From here, you can not only choose the game, but change settings like screen brightness, scan lines, bonus lines, etc. The Frenzy version comes with an option to have the marquee flicker to replicate the idea that it's an arcade machine that has perhaps seen better days. Luckily, that option is also included here when playing Frenzy, so you can see how that looks with the Berserk marquee as well. If you missed out on the pre-release sale for these machines, both versions are currently listed as coming soon on New Wave Toys website. The Berserk version retails for $179.99, while the Frenzy Survivor Series version will be $189.99. Here's a look at that version from their website. As you can see, this Survivor Series version is meant to look like a well-worn arcade machine that has been played hard. The paint is faded and chipped, and as I talked about before, the marquee has the option to flicker on and off. It's a unique idea that adds something to these collectible mini arcade games that hasn't been seen before. However, please keep in mind that both versions play both games and have the same overall features. So the one you get will be based on the one you like the look of better. But before I wrap this up, I do want to mention one more thing. New Wave Toys is currently sponsoring a contest where one lucky person will win a Berserk and Frenzy Twin Pack. That's right, both games for free. All you have to do to enter is become a member of the official Global New Wave Toys fan page on Facebook. Now, this contest is open to anyone worldwide, and once that page hits 5,000 members, they'll choose a winner. The winner will be announced on the Kicking It Old School show, which typically airs Friday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you're not subscribed to Glenn's Retro Show on YouTube, you might want to do that as well so you don't miss the announcement. The winner will have to be present in the chat of the show when they are picked in order to receive their prize. So be sure to join the fan page on Facebook as soon as you're done watching this video, of course. And there you have it, a look at New Wave Toys' most recent replicates, Berserk and Frenzy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and do that as well. And, of course, leave a comment below. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, and happy gaming.